ahead and worship the Lord for this evening. Let's call him Yahweh, our God, our strength, the miracle worker. Lord, we worship you. We worship you, Father. We worship you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to thank everyone uh, that is online tonight. I want to say thank you so much. God bless you. Uh, it's my pleasure to be here this evening again with you. My name is Wale Onojoko, and um, I'll be taking today's session. Uh, I want to appreciate the organizers of this program, Adasa Patrick Ministries, uh, the sets person of the ministry, Adasa Patrick. Uh, thank you so much for giving me this privilege, and I want to thank everyone uh, that has been joining us uh, on the various platforms from the beginning of this program. Uh, today, uh, we're going to be pushing it forward, uh, and we're going to be talking today by the grace of God on what I call the legacy of faith. We're going to be sharing very briefly, and um, after that, we'll pray, uh, we'll pray together. Um, I just wanted to join me in prayer tonight. Let's just appreciate our God. Uh, let's appreciate the one whose name is Yahweh, the one who is the miracle worker, the God who changes the unchangeable. Father, we thank you for the privilege to come into your presence. God, you are the one who makes impossible possible. You are the God who changes life. You are the God that answers prayers. Lord, unto you shall all flesh gather. We have come, Lord, to you with so much confidence tonight. Thank you, Lord God, for every blessing you have given to your children, Lord, from the beginning of this program. Thank you, Father, for your protection over every family. Thank you, Father, for every man, every woman, every father, every mother, every child. Lord, we thank you. Thank you, Lord, that, Father, we are able to be partakers of today's blessing, that we are able to uh, uh, come together to pray to you 
is because of the breath of life. Thank you, Lord. Even in the midst of the gross darkness, Lord God, that has enveloped the world, Lord, your light of salvation continues to shine upon us. Thank you for protection. Thank you, Father, for our families. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you for privilege to come to your presence with all boldness, even to receive help regarding our children. Lord, we thank you. Thank you, Father. We do not take it for granted. We have come, Lord, uh, on the wavelength of your mercy, on the wavelength of your grace. Father, because of what you have done, we have come because of the righteousness of your Son, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Lord, we want to thank you for that which you will do today. Thank you, Father, for because you will give us knowledge. Lord God, because the veil will be taken away. Thank you, Lord, because no one that will be partake, that, that, that will join today, or Lord, that will partake of the blessings the one way or the other, will return the same. In the name of Jesus, Lord, lives will be mended. Lord God Almighty, relationships will be mended. Lord God, the restoration. Lord God, people will find purpose in the name of Jesus. There will be direction. Holy Spirit will welcome you. Holy Spirit will welcome you. You are the Spirit that garnished the heavens. You are the Spirit that changes. You are the Spirit that beautifies. Lord, we come to you today. Do that which you alone can do in each and every of our lives. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And Lord, I, I, I surrender myself to you today and I receive the grace that makes the teaching of the word of God easy. I pray, Father, for clarity of thought. I pray, Father, for clarity of expression. I pray, Father, today that you will cause the word of God to come with simplicity and yet with life-transforming power and your anointing. And Lord, let no one that has come let none return the same. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, I'm so excited uh, to, to share today with you and uh, for us to spend some time uh, together to, to pray. Hallelujah. Uh, before we pray, I would like you to quickly uh, turn your Bibles uh, with me to... Uh, 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy, and we're going to be reading from verse 1 through 5. Uh, today, we're going to be teaching very briefly in a couple of minutes about the legacy of faith. Legacy, or you can call it legacy producing faith. Amen. I'm going to be reading from the uh, New King James Version. Uh, it says, Paul, an apostle by the will of God, according to the promise of life which is in Christ Jesus, to Timothy, a beloved son, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank God, whom I serve with a pure conscience, as my forefathers did, as without ceasing, I remember you in my prayers night and day, greatly desiring to see you, being mindful of your tears, that I may be filled with joy. When I call to remembrance the genuine faith that is in you, which dwelt first in your grandmother Louis and your mother Eunice, I am persuaded is in you also. Hallelujah. So today, we're going to be learning about the faith, you know, a legacy producing faith, a legacy producing faith. Here, Paul, the, the spiritual father of Timothy, you know, was uh, telling me what he considered a strong and firm foundation for his faith. And he traced it back to the faith of his mothers, for the faith of, uh, to the faith of his grandmother, to the faith of his own mother. And it now said that faith is also in, in Timothy. And so today, I'm going to be taking time for us to pray for us as parents and for our children. Because, you know, if the foundation is destroyed, what can the righteous do? You see, when 
Parents do not live for God. They are, whether knowingly or knowingly, you know, still creating a legacy, but not a legacy that is worthwhile. Amen. So, there are three key ways you could live your life or your time here on earth. You can, you can live, you know, simply by, you can, people waste their lives. There are people who come to this world and the only thing we remember about them was that they came. As a matter of fact, they so wasted their lives on frivolous living. You know, it's just, it's just a, a rigmarole. There was nothing, you know, there was nothing about purpose. There was nothing uh, about a sense of purpose. They just live so carelessly. As parents, as husband, as wife, as career people, there was nothing about their life, you know. You know, it was just a waste of time. Of life, a waste of opportunity to make a difference. So people can waste their lives. The second way people could live their life is to spend their lives. So some of us, you know, when we when we go to work, we receive our salaries and and, and pay, you know, and as we are getting it, we are spending it. We are, you know, enjoying our life, making the trips, traveling up across the world, you know, buying the latest car, building the best of houses. We are still living, but the kind of life is you are spending your life. Everything you do ends with you. There is no sense of, you know, there, there, there's no sense of investment of your life. There is nothing the future generation will be able to hold on to in your life to count it enough as a blessing. So that life, even though it's not wasted, but it's not, it's just spent. And that life ends with the one who lives that life. Of course, you, you go to work, you get paid, you spend the money, so you spend your life, you do what you can, and you know, but there is nothing about, you know, that life ends with you. So that is a way to spend your life. The third way we could live our life, which is the best and should be the aspiration of each and every one of us, is that we can invest our lives. For the benefit of others that are coming. And that is a life of wisdom. You know, Moses in Psalm 90 was praying. Psalm 90 verse 12. It said, teach us, O Lord, to number our days, that we may apply our heart unto wisdom. So to live your life as an investment for your generation as an investment for the generations that will come after you, that is a life of wisdom. That is a life that glorifies God. That is a life that brings results. That is a life that brings about legacy. Hallelujah. You know, so a call to parenting is a call for us to live a life of legacy. It's a life of responsibility. It's a life that, you know, makes us to have a long-term perspective of the call of God on our life as parents. So every decision I'm making as a parent, I'm not just making, I, I, I have that understanding that it's not just about me, but what I'm doing today will affect my children. It will affect their children's children. That what I'm doing today will affect the future of my country. It will affect the future of my career. It will affect People that are to come. And that is the life of legacy. So legacy is simply what we leave to generations to come after us. That is legacy. So when you live your life with a long perspective in mind. So you are not just living your life as Esau. You know, Esau, the difference between Esau and Jacob was because Esau had a long term perspective. Oh, sorry, Jacob, rather. But for Esau, it was about the immediate. It was about his hunger. It was about the satisfaction of his immediate need. He was not thinking of his birthright. He was not thinking about, you know, the things that will affect the generations to come. You know, but Jacob had a long-term perspective. He knew that that which he could buy today, he could buy tomorrow with his investment of today. So he's willing to sacrifice. He's willing to pray. He's willing to, to you know, to, 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 you know, to let go of momentary pleasure. Why? Because there is something more. Hallelujah. And one of the best uh, 
stories I've had about legacy, it's, it's, a man, it's about a man, you know, that was going on a journey. And for all of us, it's, we are going on journeys. So this man, you know, it's, it's a, a very old man. So he came across a chasm. It's like a, a deep, deep gorge on the road. It was passing. And it was such a struggle. It was such a, you know, a very long journey for him to cross from one part of the uh, chasm to the other. You know, it was a very deep gorge. And eventually this man was able, you know, you know, with his stretch, with his struggles, with, he was able to cross over to the other side. And normally what he would have naturally, uh, uh, naturally done was to just continue on that journey. But not this older man. It did consciously build, uh, the man did consciously build uh, uh, a bridge. And so a fellow traveler asked him, he said, old man, he said, you're not going to pass this way again. He said, you're al it's almost late and you're never going to pass this road. The old man said, there is a young man that is coming behind me. You know that will pass this gorge he said for him i'm building this bridge so when we live our life with 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 legacy perspective we're thinking that what we are doing the prayers we are praying today you know the sacrifices we are you know making today the investment we are making our decision the decision regarding who we will marry this the decision regarding the kind of job regarding how we will live for god those are you know legacy perspective it is not about us it's about those that are coming so for us as parents the decisions we are taking whether or not we are conscious of it it's going to have an impact on our children on our children's children the bible says in psalm 22 verse 30 it said a seed shall serve him a seed shall serve him and it shall be accounted to a generation so our lives before god are like a seed so when we serve god our children will benefit from it when we are faithful in our work with god our children will benefit from it and the best legacy we can leave for our children, it's walking with God. Hallelujah. So we must see our life as seed. We must have long-term perspective. And it must begin with decision and intentionality. You know, I, I know in the last couple, several months, Adessa Patrick has been talking about intentional living. So to live a life of legacy must begin with intentionality. It must begin with, you know, with a decision to work with God. And there are four key things. I'm going to talk about that and I'm going to round off and we'll pray. You know, that can make our, you know, our faith, our work with God to have an enduring effect on on generations to come. The number one thing, if our faith must produce in our children and our children's children, then it must be a sincere faith. Our faith must be true. You know, Paul describing the, the faith of the mother of, of Timothy and his grandmother, he said the unfeigned faith and unfeigned faith is, uh, is a faith that is sincere. It's a faith that is true. You are not saying you are a servant of God or you are a Christian and your life is not aligning with the truth of the word of God. So if you want your faith to have a positive effect on your children, if you want your children to walk in the path of God, if you want generations that are coming behind you to, you know, to, to benefit, like Isaac benefited from the work of God with, uh, with Abraham's work with God, and Jacob benefited from Isaac's work with the Lord, and that's it, how it continues. So if you want to be the peculiar link of destiny for your family, for your children, if you want your children to serve God, then the faith which you profess must be unfeigned. It must be truth. It must be sincere. Hallelujah. It must begin with an encounter with God. It's not just, you know, it's not just, okay, maybe someday I'm going to know God. No, it must be truth. 
it must begin with an encounter. The number two thing for a faith, a legacy producing faith, is that it must have action. We must act what we say we believe. You know, Jesus Christ was talking with the, you know, with the Pharisee. I think it's in Matthew chapter 15. And he, he, he was quoting from the book of Isaiah. He, he said, uh, he, he said to them, he said, These people draw nigh unto me with their mouth. He said, but their heart is far away from me. He said, they honor me with their mouth, but their heart. So as we say we want, we are honoring God, we go to church, we pray, then our conduct, our action must align with the truth of the word of God. Our conduct must align with the truth of the word of God. Amen. That's why the psalmist says, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable unto you, O Lord. So it must, there must be an alignment. It must be truthful. That is what you call integrity. See, when you say, when you say somebody is a person of integrity, it doesn't mean they don't make mistakes. No. Integrity means sincerity. Integrity means, you know, it's from the word integer. One. That's why that you know it's it's whole. So you don't live one life here, or you don't live one life on social media. You live another life on in church. You live another life in, at the home. You live another life at the office. No, your conduct and character must align with the truth of the word of God. So you must act out what you believe. You know there's a saying that is so powerful that I love. It says. Uh, it, it said we, 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 we teach the things we know, but we produce, we reproduce who we are. So it's one thing for you every morning to pray with your children, to teach them the word of God. But when it comes down to the real thing, your children will take after your character. So we teach what we know, but for us to reproduce that in our children, then we must live that life. So when you tell your child, don't lie, don't lie to your children. When you tell your child not to gossip, don't talk to about other people behind them in front of your children. When you say it's wrong to steal, do not, don't take what does not belong to you from your work, from, 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 from your employer. Don't lie about your time. You know, so when we leave those lies before, when you tell your children to pray, you know, pray before them. When you want them to study the Bible, study the Bible. Be, be, live the life before them, model that right life and your children will follow through and they will also pass it to their own, to their own children. The, 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 the third thing is commitment. So your faith in God, for it to produce real thing, for it to produce you know, a worthy legacy, your faith in God must be a committed faith. A faith of commitment. You don't serve God because of what you're going to eat. And that is the challenge of, of the kind of faith I see, especially in third world countries, because of what we shall, what, you know, you know so our faith is, Lord, give me a job. Our faith is, Lord, give me, give me, uh, give me a good wife. Our faith is because we are hungry. No. So, so when you then, you know, when, when you do not get that job, when you do not get that money, so God is no longer good. No. So our faith in God must be a faith of commitment. Let your children know that when there is abundance, daddy and mommy stays committed to God. When they, you know, in, in problem, they stay committed to God. When prayer seems delayed, in ans you know, in, when answer to prayer seems delayed in coming, they still see you committed to God. From there, they, they are, they, they, you know, that is what the child carries for the rest of his own life or her life. That is what that child, you know, like, oh, I can see my, you know, you know, I, I know when things are tough, my mom was to pray, my dad was to pray. I remember, I rem they will remember, they will carry that memory for the rest of their life. So our, 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 our faith in God. If it must produce results for generations to come, then we must be committed to God in good and bad times. And the last thing I would say is that for our faith in God to produce results, 
For faith in God to be a legacy producing faith, we must depend on the grace of God. Hallelujah. We must depend on the grace of God. And that's where I'm going to end. You know, in Psalm 127, verse 3 and 4, the Bible says, uh, or actually from verse 1, the Bible says, uh, except the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain that builds it. Except the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain. Except the Lord watches over the city, he said the watchmen do so in vain. So if your faith, it is one thing for you to take children to church, make sure they are studying the Bible, what the friends they keep, teach them. But eventually you can live the life before them. There are awesome people of God whose children became, you know, became rebellious against God. So that is, having done all that you can do as a person, you must yet rely on the grace of God. To be able to transfer what you have known with God to generations to come. And I pray for all parents on this platform. I pray, Father, for every family that is represented. That our life will be truthful. Our faith will be genuine. Our faith will produce results in the mighty name of Jesus. It will be a faith of commitment to God in good time. And more so, it will be a faith that is dependent on the help of God in the mighty name of Jesus. I want us to just go ahead and, and pray at this moment. Let's just begin to thank God. Let's begin to appreciate God. Father, we just want to thank you uh, for tonight. We thank you, Lord, for uh, teaching us your word tonight. Thank you, Father, for teaching us how, how to live a life of legacy through faith. How to, to walk before you, that our children and children after us will be blessed. Father, we want to thank you. Lord, today we thank you. I want you to begin to receive the grace to walk before God in faith, in honesty, in sincerity. Let us pray, say, Father, I want to walk with you. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we come to you today as parents unto our children. And Lord, we will receive your help in the mighty name of Jesus to live a life of faith. To live a life of integrity. That Lord God, our faith before you will be genuine. Our faith before you, Lord, will produce results. Our faith before you will not be on our own righteousness. But Father, it will depend on your help day by day. In the mighty name of Jesus, let's go ahead and pray. Father, we receive of your help. In the name of Jesus, I receive your help over every woman, over every man, over every father. Lord God Almighty, we receive your help. Go ahead and pray for the help of God. You said, except the Lord builds the house. They labor. Actually, they labor. They worked. They did everything they should do. He said, but yet that labor was in vain because they do not have the help of God. I want you to pray for yourself. I want you to pray. Say, Father, my labor over my children, my labor for my family, my labor of a faith work will not be in vain. In the mighty name of Jesus, it will produce, O oh Lord, it will produce, O oh Lord, a fruit of righteousness for seeds that are coming out before before me in the name of Jesus and the name of Jesus it will be a seed producing faith Lord God for generations to come in the mighty name of Jesus in Jesus mighty name we have prayed with thanksgiving amen hallelujah we're gonna be praying in the next three to four minutes Proverbs 20 verse 7 says the just man walks in his integrity his children are blessed after him. Let me tell you something. The way you walk with God will determine how blessed generations after you will be. You know, there is a man of God here in Houston, Texas, you know, who started his ministry five years ago. And that ministry in five years exploded. You know, it, it, it grew so fast that it's unprecedented. And everybody felt, how did this man of God do it? How, you know, how did it become, you know, so it, it, it could not be explained by what he himself has done. So one day I was listening to him, only for me to realize that this man of God has been, is a product of intergeneration faith. 
His father's father's father was a pastor. His father's father was a pastor, you know, and his own father was a pastor. So those people before time, they've been sowing the seed of investment into God's kingdom. They've been sowing seeds of faith, seeds of prayer. They've been, the mother has been praying for him. And so he came to reap the blessing, the intergenerational source of blessing upon his own work. I want you to pray. Say, Father, by reason of, your, of, of my work of faith, Lord God, generations after me will be blessed. In the name of Jesus. I want you to pray that, Lord, generations after me will be blessed. In the mighty name of Jesus. Generations after me will be blessed. In the mighty name of Jesus. I pray, Lord God Almighty, that my work with you will not be the end. My children will work with you. In in the name of Jesus, my grandchildren will serve you. In the name of Jesus, Lord God Almighty, as a result of my work with you, my nation will be better. Oh Lord, my community will be better. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God Almighty, because of my work with you, Lord, the kingdom of heaven here on earth becomes expanded. In the name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed with thanksgiving. Amen. Hallelujah. We are going to yet pray. You know, no matter how precious a seed is, you know, when you when you place it in the wrong soil, that seed will die. So, one thing about the potential greatness of children, it's a function of the environment, you know, that they have around them. And the number one environment that the child's life and potential can grow, it's at the home front. Amen. So, one thing that could make a child's destiny to blossom is when there is love in the home. Is when there is love between the mother and the father. When there is respect between, you know, for, you know when the mother respects the, the, the father, when the father loves the woman as Christ loved the church, when there is selflessness, when there is sacrifice, when there is mutual respect between the man and the woman, when the child, you know, can see that, when the child can feel the love of God, the destiny of the greatness begin to blossom. And that's what we're going to be praying for our homes right now. Say, Lord, let our homes be the harbors of God's love. In the name of Jesus, shall we just pray? Lord God, we pray that our homes will be the heaven of your love. In the name of Jesus, Lord God, between where men and women, between fathers and mothers, Lord God, your love will exist. That husbands will love their, 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 their wives as Christ loved the church and lay down his life for her. In the name of Jesus, we receive grace for men to love their wives. We we receive grace for men to be selfless. We receive may grace for men to serve as pastors in their home, to serve as priests, leading their family to worship God. We receive grace for women. We thank God because they have wisdom of God to build their home, to respect their husband, to love their husband, to serve their family. We pray, Father, for our children that, Lord, they will not be children of Belial. Lord God Almighty, our children will not grow wayward. They will not grow rebellious in the mighty name of Jesus. That Lord, their lives is guided by your word. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed with thanksgiving. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, I'm sure we're going to continue to pray. Uh, we cannot be tired of praying and praying. And I want you to know you see, when you come online like this, when you pray in your secret place, or you know, however you choose to pray, know something that when we pray, God answer. I can, I, I, you know, if I don't have any other testimonies in my life, I have had countless testimonies of answer prayer. If there are people who can pray, there is a God in heaven who answer prayer. And I want you to join us uh, tomorrow again. As we continue in this uh, uh, prayer time, may the good Lord bless you. Uh, do have a wonderful rest of your uh, rest of your day, and uh, we're going to be communicating the time uh, uh, for tomorrow's meeting to you appropriately. God bless you. Thanks so much for joining. I appreciate it. Bye bye.